In this tutorial, I will be showing you how to take these two models and bring them into Unity, as well as an example of what you can do with these models once you've brought them into Unity. Before we get started with actually exporting out the model, I wanted to show these five different considerations that you want to have while exporting. We'll be going through how scaling will affect the model, how important it is to actually bake in the mirrors, as well as looking at the orientation of the model, the normals of the model, and lastly, the material structure of each piece in the model. So let's go ahead and get started with exporting the model. So the first thing that we wanna do is go through and actually set up the R scene. To do so, we're going to first set up the world axis so that way we know where exactly the model will be in reference to the origin. The next thing we're going to do is go over and actually begin to bake out our mirrors. To do this, we are just going to go through and grab each of the models that might have had duplicates and edit them and then uncheck their mirrored properties. Went ahead and sped up this process um, in the video so that we didn't have to go through all of them. Um, but once we finish this, we are going to go ahead and take the models, we're going to group the models, and then we're going to bake out all the mirrors at once. The next thing we'll do is look at how we can plan the materials for our model. You can do this in a different, a bunch of different ways. You can either do what I did here and actually separate out each of the parts based off the materials that they would um, have in the final model. Um, and in our case, what we're going to do is just leave it like this because I'm just going to leave the materials uh, the same once we get into Unity. But if you wanted to, you could also just remove all the materials and assign them within Unity. It really is a personal preference. The next thing we can do is take these two different models and then place them on their own layers. That way, once we go to actually export, we can just hide one and then export out the other model. It makes it a little bit easier in kind of knowing what we're doing while we're exporting. The next thing that we can do is, is kind of reposition our models so that way we can have the origin point of the model be exactly where we want it. So in this case, I'm just positioning the model in the scene such that the origin is actually at the bottom of the model. The next consideration we'll have is actually in the orientation of the normals. So it's hard to kind of see in the gravity sketch model because they, they're kind of two-sided surfaces. You don't really get to see whether or not the models or the normals are messed up. But you will notice this once you get into Unity. So what we're gonna do is actually take the tool and the tool belt and flip the normals just by selecting the object and flipping the orientation of them. So that way, once we export it in, we don't have to do any extra work to kind of fix them after the fact. Next, we can determine the actual correct scale for this object. If you notice, this object is really giant. So I went ahead and used the new feature that you can actually keep the orientation of the model as you scale when you're using smart uh, scaling and scaled it down to a reasonable size at full scale. So then our next step is actually to just go ahead and export out the model. The couple considerations that you wanna have in exporting out the model will be setting up the normals to be single-sided instead of double-sided and also setting up the sub-D surfaces to export out as subdivided surfaces and not as the base mesh. So that way you have nice smooth surfaces when you import it into Unity. The next setting we'll wanna set is actually the unit scale for the model. We wanna make sure to set it to meters and not uh, millimeters because we wanna make sure that the actual scale coming in is correct. And Unity uses meters as the base unit of measure. The other thing we wanna make sure is that the Y axis is set to up. Um, Unity uses the Y up instead of Z, so that way when we actually import it in, the orientation will be correct and the model will be sitting upright. Once we've done all of that, we are good to go to actually export out this model. So now we just go ahead and export it, give it a name, and I'm just going to go ahead and do this for both of the models and skip ahead to opening them up into Unity. All right, I'm going to go ahead and open up Unity Hub, which gives you access to all of your Unity projects as well as installations of the Unity editor. And I'm gonna, I already have this project set up called the GS uh, workflow video. And I'm using in this project a couple of plugins. So I'm using the uh, VR interaction framework to actually give me the VR um, 
rig to be able to get the controllers moving and tracking and be able to move around the space and pick up objects and things. And I'm also using some different uh, plugins for materials or for skyboxes and things. And I can uh, have a link in the description to those different plugins. So to actually get the model in, we're just gonna open them up and then just drag and drop both of the files that have exported out. Um, these are OBJ, so they're gonna have a material file associated with them. So we wanna make sure to bring both of those files in the project. So that way we get the materials and colors from that uh, second file. So I'm just gonna go ahead and do those for both of these models. And that's it for importing. It's as easy as dragging and dropping these models into the editor. Um, it'll be easy if you have everything set up in the right way, set up with the correct scale and orientation. And typically the thing that can go wrong is if you mess up any of those features, any of those steps in the process, then um, the model will come out a weird size um, or orientation or whatnot. But I'm just gonna go ahead and place these objects in the scene so you can see them. And they look like they're the right scale and proportion. And I'm just gonna place them in here um, on this table that I've set up. Um, I've made this little environment to just kind of give it some character and make the, the scene a little bit more interesting as if you were showcasing these, these two products um, for a demonstration. And then in the next part of this video, I'm just gonna walk through really quickly how to add interaction and um, physics to it. This is by no means a full tutorial on Unity. There are plenty tutorials out there to kind of go through how to use Unity, but this was just to kind of show you, once you get into Unity, what you can do with it um, and the different features. So the first thing that I did in kind of adding some extra stuff to it was set up different materials. I added um, a different type of wood material with a color um, to kind of get the reflections and things right. Um, and then also added a little glow material on the bottom of the um, lamp to make it look like there's a little light on the bottom um, and use the emission channel to kind of give it that little bit of glow. There's some different effects and things you can do to the camera to actually make it look like it's glowing and things. But for the sake of this tutorial, I didn't, I didn't go through to do it. Um, but yeah, just showcasing right here how you can make the object glow. And then I'm going to go through and actually set up some box colliders which will basically define in the object how the object will interact with other objects. So the in, t in terms of the box collider, um, if I were to actually like throw the object, it would behave as if it was a box um, and have that same sort of physics. So this just helps once we add the physics node or the physics component, um, it'll help kind of define where it hits. The other thing I'm going to do as well is add a rigid body, which this actually gives our object physics um, and it can be thrown or there'll be gravity applied to it. And you can do some really fun things to these objects too. You can turn off gravity and have them floating around. You could do all kinds of uh, fun stuff with that. But if you add a rigid body in a, in a box collider, then that allows the object to be able to interact in your environment. And then I'm also going to add, and this is specific to the plugin, the VR plugin, um, a grabbable component. And this just allows me to be able to actually grab the object. Again, if you want to know more about this, you can dive into the VR um, interaction framework. They have all kinds of tutorials and things on how to do that. And finally, I actually get to test the experience. And I just kind of went through and just showcasing how you can pick up these objects. You could grab them. You can, um, they have a little bit of physics, a little bit of wobble when you can throw them and just kind of have fun with the experience. So I hope this was helpful for anybody interested in kind of taking their models into Unity. Um, and please leave a comment below if there's any questions or anything that you would love to add to these uh, tutorials. Thank you and have a good one.